I'm Matt Sargent with ABC Acres here in Hamilton, Montana. Thanks for joining us today. Um, today we're going to start the first of a three or four part series about soil health. And this is prompted by one of our viewers, Chris, who had commented on one of our more recent videos wondering what I thought of rock phosphate. And uh, for those of you who don't know me and don't know my past, prior to joining this wonderful team here at ABC Acres, I was running my own farm outside of Louisville, Kentucky, where I also worked part-time at a local organic feed and seed store. Um, if you're near Louisville, Kentucky, I highly recommend dropping in at Fresh Start Grower Supply, telling Steve Paradis and Lucas uh, that Matt says what's up. Um, hopefully they won't upcharge you too much for that. But uh, I can tell you what I think of rock phosphate. That's no problem. But when I was at farmer's markets or working at Fresh Start, all the time people would come in, well, what do you think of this amendment? Or should I put on this amendment? And I would always say, well, what does your soil test say? And people would say, I don't know. And to just blindly start adding stuff to your soil without knowing what it needs would be like going out and buying a new alternator for your car without ascertaining whether or not your car needed a new alternator. Yeah, eventually it will, but the alternator that you have now has probably got another couple hundred miles on it at least, if not thousand. So um, I like to know before I go. And then I start thinking about the uh, what sort of amendments. And as permaculturists, um, a lot of people get really hung up on the notion that it's all about biology. Well, the nutrients in the soil, the micro and macronutrients, can have a great effect on the cap soil's capacity to have a good diversity of soil biology, your nematodes, your bacteria, your fungi, your fungi, your flagellates, all that fun stuff. Um, but everyone gets kind of scared of the actual chemistry and you know, it is an organic chemistry. Biology is directly affected by chemistry. So you need to make sure that you have the right balance of chemicals to support the biology. And that all requires a soil test. So I'm going to go over that really quick because not everyone knows how to take a soil test. And it's really simple. Um, basically, for proper garden beds that are maintained and dug, you're going to take your soil test as deep as you can. So to your plow depth, if you're testing soils in a pasture, you're only going to go four inches deep if it's a permanent pasture. And then you want a good representative sample. This is a 30 inch bed that's 40 feet long. We'd probably take 16 different cores, put them all in the bucket, mix them up, let them dry overnight, and then take a softball sam size sample of that and send it off or bring it into our county extension agent. I like using Kinsey Ag um, Solutions. Um, we'll put a link, but uh, they're very thorough and they're gonna give you the most um, extensive mineral list. They do cost a lot more. You can get a really down and dirty, cheap uh, soil test done in most county extension agencies for like 20 bucks, and that's gonna at least point you in the right direction. And then you can start worrying about balancing your chemistry to balance your biology. And in future ep episodes, I'm going to talk about why you should worry about those and why you shouldn't get to worry about a no input system. But as far as taking your samples, like I said, you're going to go as deep as you can, which here happens to be the depth of my Hori Hori knife. And then you're going to take that sample. Now if I took one here, now I'm going to take one across from it and then the next one I'm going to go about a foot down and go in the middle and I'm going to repeat this sample all the way up and down the bed until I feel that I have a good representation of the area that said I tested this in the fall I know what's up but basically from here what I would do is take this bucket and I'd go into the shop or the garage somewhere warm put out a piece of newspaper dump it all out on the newspaper, mix it up, let it sit out and dry overnight. Then the next day I'm coming in, mixing it all up really good, making sure I don't have any mulch in it, and get a good softball size of it, put it in a bag, and either send it to whoever you're going to have test it, or bring it in. 
and then you're going to wait until you get results. And once you get results, then you can decide what your next step is. So I hope that showed you how to take a soil test. And now you understand why you should take a soil test. And if you tune in in the next couple episodes, you're going to learn what you can do with that soil test information. Um, and as always, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, as always, thanks for joining us. And until next time, happy growing. Thank you.